the argument is, hey, um, tattoos may open up doors for me to witness people. Well, what about the converse of that? Tattoos may shut down many opportunities, many, many opportunities for you to share with someone. Now, there's a pride in insisting on your own rights and I have a right to do this and I don't care what anybody else thinks. That reveals a spirit behind it that's not from the Lord. So you can look in um, first, first Corinthians chapter eight where Paul is dealing with this and eight, nine, not tattoo specifically, but this principle that my rights is all that matters and I have a right, okay? He says, be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge and he's mentioned eating an idol's temple. So he's saying if you can go into an idolatrous temple and eat this meal and you're free because you don't you know that idol is nothing and you've got faith that it's nothing, which is true. But if they see you doing that, right, but they don't understand what's going on, they have a weaker conscience about it, they can't see past that. It says, Won't that person be emboldened to eat what is sacrificed to idols? So this weak brother or sister, this is the key thing. So this weak brother or sister for whom Christ died is destroyed by your knowledge, okay? And it might be a genuine knowledge of the Lord that, hey, it doesn't matter where I go, what I eat, I'm with Jesus, I'm not sinning. But he's saying, even in that scenario, if you're giving off the impression that something's okay, that's really not okay for that other person, you could be destroying them. When you sin against them in this way and wound their weak conscience, you sin against Christ. He calls it a sin. Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again so that I will not cause them to fall. Okay, so love and wisdom is focused on the Lord and on other people. It is not focused on ourselves. One of the big problems with the tattoo idea is it's all about you. It's all about I like it. I want it. It's okay for me. What's who cares who, how it offends someone else or if they don't like it? There's a rebelliousness to it and a pride to it. That's not really acceptable to the Lord. Let me give you another example of that. You, you and I do not know. We have no right to tell God where we're called and who we're called to minister to. We have no right to intentionally limit our pool of people that we can minister to. Okay. Now, not having tattoos does not limit your ability to minister to anyone. That is an insult to the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't have tattoos. The apostles didn't have tattoos. They were Jews. They believed it was sinful in any form. They wouldn't have done that. None of the early church fathers had tattoos. They did not get limited to witnessing to the tattooed up pagans. You know, Patrick went to Ireland. They were all tattooed. He didn't have to get tattoos to witness to them.